Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos, so just going to give you some um, additional um, information um, about uh, Paul Pogba and there's also uh, lots of um, other things uh, to come here to talk about, so if you do consider uh, dropping likes and if you do consider a uh, subscriber to the channel um, as always. So we do know it's been looking very imminent uh, that Paul Pogba um, is set to uh, leave uh, Manchester United, because obviously you know, from his own perspective um, he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, Paul Pogba and he has been relentlessly you know, linked to uh, with move away from Manchester United and we do know it is Real Madrid and Juventus of course uh, that are battling out uh, for um, his service. But I do believe Paul Pogba's first choice preference um, is Real Madrid. But obviously, you know, based on the huge transfer fee that we have put on Paul Pogba, you know, there is a possibility chance, you know, that he could uh, remain um, at the football club. But recent reports have come out anyway, you know, saying that Juventus um, are interested in re-signing him. Obviously, you know, the reports were emerging about this, you know, last week, saying that Juventus are interested in re-signing him. It does say Juventus, you know, are in talks uh, with Manchester United. And Juventus, of course, um, have been in negotiations with Paul Pogba's um, agent, uh, Riley Ola. So they are interested in re-signing him. Uh, more than likely, Juventus would have to offload a couple of their uh, central players um, as part of the deal, you know, to uh, fund uh, the move uh, for Paul Pogba, because I don't think, you know, Juventus, you know, would be able to afford Paul Pogba um, outright, so they're going to have to offload a couple of um, their um, central players. Recent reports have come out saying that Manchester United um, are considering, you know, selling uh, Paul Pogba if Juventus are willing to offer, you know, uh, Joe uh, Sancelo um, as part um, of the deal um, and all that. So reportedly Manchester United have told uh, Juventus that we want Joe, Joe uh, Sancelo um, in exchange uh, for Paul Pogba. Whether Juventus will be go willing to go along with this or not, um, I do not know. Obviously, I think one of the players Juventus are willing to offer um, to lure Paul Pogba away from Manchester United um, is Paulo Dybala. And I think Paul Dybala um, has been on uh, Manchester United's um, agenda you know, for quite uh, some time. And maybe Paul Pogba you know, would be open you know, to making the return uh, back to uh, you know, Turin. Obviously, he did have uh, four good years um, in Turin. You know, he exceeded expectation levels and all that. You know, and he played uh, really, really well, but hasn't really replicated this form you know, since he came back to uh, Manchester United. And he hasn't really been the fundamental player um, as we all thought he would have been. And he hasn't uh, really um, exceeded um, expectation levels. Obviously, you know, we're paid £89 million pounds for him, um, obviously um, our most um, expensive signing, but there's also been a hell of a lot of talks about him, you know, going uh, to Real Madrid, obviously, you know, Zinedine Zidane um, has instructed his Real Madrid board, you know, to prioritise um, a transfer uh, for Paul Pogba, but like I said, I don't think Real Madrid um, are keen on a straight cash payment, so I think, you know, there were talks going on, was it early on this week, or was it last week, saying that Real Madrid, you know, are willing to offer Gareth Bale, um, you know, in, in a transfer offer, of course, uh, for Paul Pogba, whether Manchester United, you know, will be willing to go along with this, um, I do not know, but obviously, I think Real Madrid, uh, so far this summer they've got about four or five players um, on the board obviously you know they've got Eden Hazard from Chelsea obviously Luka Jovetic uh, from Frankfurt they've also got um, I think Eden Militeo uh, from Porto and I think they've got another two uh, players um, as well so obviously Zinedine Zidane knows that you know Paul Pogba is going to help them you know with their uh, rebuilding project term um, and all that and you know Paul Pogba was talking a lot um, about uh, Real Madrid you know um, a while back he said at some point in his career you know he wants to uh, play uh, for Real Madrid um, obviously you know Zinedine Zidane is a big um, admirer of the player but reportedly you know we want around £150 million pounds there for Paul Pogba but obviously this is a figure that Real Madrid um, of course um, are reluctant uh, to meet. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, this summer, you know, he's working on, you know, bringing the right players to Manchester United, who he thinks are going to be good enough to represent Manchester United, and who he thinks are going to fit the culture of the club, who he thinks, of course, are going to fit uh, the history of the club. So he's looking to bring about five new additions in, of course. Obviously, we've got Daniel James um, on the board, but obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to continue, you know, build on that and full, full them areas. Obviously, you know, where Manchester United, um, of course, um, are lacking. But Solskjaer is also, you know, working on trying to uh, keep his imperative players um, the football club. And obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how imperative Paul Pogba is. Um, obviously, it came out um, a couple of weeks ago saying that, uh, uh, Solskjaer offered, well, was willing to offer Paul Pogba the captaincy in a bid to convince him to stay um, at the football club. But obviously, this isn't going to be enough to, co to convince Paul Pogba to stay. We do know, at least in the last month um, or two, that Paul Pogba's agent, Riley Ola, has been in the process um, of finding um, a new club. Paul Pogba's got two years left on his contract, so there's also um, an option um, of a further year, of course. But like I said, you know, we paid £89 million. And like I said, we've got a history um, of spending a big um, on players, especially in recent years. You know, Lukaku, £75 million. Obviously, he's been linked to a move away from Manchester United. Obviously, you know, Paul Pogba, of course, at £89 million. Pounds. And always spending big on players, you know, doesn't always guarantee you success. Like I said, you can get the best players in the world, you know, if they're not playing as a unit and they're not, of course, uh, playing them um, as a team. Yeah, of course, um, it's not uh, going to uh, get you anywhere. So, reportedly, you know, he could, you know, make a return uh, a return back to her chairman, but I think his first choice preference is Real Madrid's, um, is Paul Pobbers. But I think a couple of main factor reasons why he wants to leave Manchester United because maybe he wants to be in Champions League football, maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players as well, maybe he wants to be winning silverware, maybe he wants to be competing. And of course, um, he's not experiencing this um, at Manchester United. So basically, Paul Pogba wants to rejuvenate his career, and he's still got a hell of a lot of development in him. You know, he's um, only had 26 years of age, he's in his prime. <coughs> 
he's got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, um, of course, um, as Paul Popper. But we do know last year, you know, he was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation, you know, based um, on his uh, poor uh, relationship uh, with Jose Mourinho. Um, I think last year he was linked with uh, Juventus. I think also back in January there was talks of him uh, going uh, to Barcelona. But obviously Paul Popper got one of his best wishes, of course, when Jose Mourinho uh, got uh, sat uh, from the club. And we saw glimpses of Paul Popper's best form, uh, mainly in that three-month period uh, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, was an uh, interim uh, manager. That's when we mainly saw the best of Paul Pogba and we mainly saw the best of Pogba when Ander Herrera was playing so that just emphasises how much of an impact Ander Herrera you know, made in that midfield because obviously he freed up Paul Pogba, Pogba was expressing himself, he was scoring goals, he was providing and in that three month period you know, he was in absolutely scintillating form uh, was Paul Pogba but like I said you know, some Manchester United fans you know, would be happy if he went, you know, some wouldn't be um, happy um, if he went because a lot of people still know how much of an essential player that Paul Pogba is um, obviously you know, we had him when he was a lot younger um, as you well know we had him when he's, uh, he was um, a lot uh, younger, um, obviously we had, uh, this is under the uh, uh, this was under the Alex Ferguson area. Obviously, we got him from Lee Harvey um, in 2009. And obviously, I think he's up the ranks for a couple of years, then went on to make a couple of first team appearances. But based on limited appearances under Alex Ferguson, obviously, you know, we'll let, you, we'll let Paul Pogba go on a free transfer uh, to Juventus. And obviously, you know, went, um, went and had uh, four good years um, in Juventus, um, of course. But like I said, uh, Real Madrid are not keen on getting him uh, getting him um, on a straight cash payment. So it did come out, like I said, that Real Madrid are reportedly willing to offer Gareth Bale in a transfer offer uh, for Paul Pogba. But we do know Gareth Bale has been relentlessly, you know, linked to uh, with move to Old Trafford since like what 2013, and the rumours um, have continued uh, to persist uh, since then. As you all know, reports came out uh, the other day, as I think a lot of people would have updated you about saying that Manchester United are reportedly, you know, uh, reportedly um, inquiring. Well, it did say we were inquiring about getting Gareth Bale um, on loan. So basically, you know, we were interested in him um, in getting him um, on loan, we were keen on getting him on a long season loan deal, uh, potentially it was two seasons because I think it did say there was an option um, for further year of him um, as well, um, but like I said it did say Manchester United, you know, were willing to uh, pay um, his wages off him um, and all that, it did obviously you know, we've got to uh, pay him um, a loan fee and that uh, for Gareth uh, Bale, but obviously you know, Real Madrid want to get rid of him, um, want to get rid of him anyway and I think from Real Madrid's preference, they pref obviously you know, they want to get rid of him permanently, but obviously they're going to find it very difficult to get rid of him permanently, you know, based um, on his, uh, you know uh, substantial uh, wages and all that, it did and as you say, Real Madrid want around 75 million million pounds uh, for Gareth Bale so basically Real Madrid are looking to recoup the majority of the money that they did pay for him from Tottenham uh, back in uh, 2013 so basically uh, they paid £85 million for him from Tottenham back in 2013 so basically Real Madrid are looking to recoup uh, the majority of um, that money but obviously Manchester United are reluctant to pay £75 million. you know Tottenham are reluctant to pay £75 million. but like I said Manchester United are not keen on getting him on a permanent deal anywhere obviously because um, he's injury prone um, and all that and obviously he's aging up he's nearly 30 years of age now and obviously he's been inconsistent in the last couple of seasons uh, with Real Madrid but to say he's injury prone, you know, his ratio is still very, very good. You know, he has uh, scored two, uh, 102 goals in 231 games for Real Madrid. I think he's provided them about uh, 64 um, assists, so his uh, ratio is still very, very good. Um, obviously, he's got three years uh, left um, on his contract uh, with Real Madrid. But like I said, um, he's too um, injury prone. I think he was also injury prone, you know, when he did uh, play uh, for Tottenham uh, when he was younger. But Zinedine Zidane uh, must confirm that Gareth Bale has no future at the club. And he's also confirmed uh, that, uh, you know, he's no longer um, in his plans um, at Real Madrid. I think from Gareth Bale's perspective, you know, he remains remains happy with Real Madrid. I don't think he uh, wants to uh, leave uh, Real Madrid, but obviously, you know, Zinedine Zidane and Florentina Perez, of course, uh, want to uh, get rid of uh, Gareth uh, Bale. So, reportedly, Manchester United um, have inquired about getting him on a loan. Like I said, we'd have to pay him um, a loan for him um, and all that. And obviously, this could be beneficial for Real Madrid because obviously, this would, make, this would mean they couldn't, you know, they can knock uh, £50 million pounds, um, off their wage bill um, in the next uh, couple of uh, season, seasons. But we don't want to get Gareth Bale um, on a permanent uh, deal, um, of course. But Real Madrid, you know, would prefer to uh, get rid of him permanently. So, like I said, many teams wouldn't be able to afford Gareth bail permanently uh, anyway you know like i said you know with his uh, substantial uh, wages um, and all that um but he has been uh, very, very um, inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of seasons. But possibly, you know, Bale could be still a part, um, a part um, of the deal uh, with Paul Pogba um, and all that. Uh, but yeah, so Paul Pogba, I think it's probably likely he will go um, and all that. You know, reports have just come out as well saying that, you know, Juventus have been in talks with Manchester United um, in London um, over the transfer um, of Paul Pogba. Obviously, Man United and Real Madrid um, have been in talks um, over the sale um, of Paul Pogba. So he doesn't, as you say, you know, want around um, £150 million pounds for him. And obviously, you know, Solskjaer and Paul, Paul Pogba, you know, built a great relationship up, you know, to be quite honest, yeah. Obviously, you know, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer managed the Manchester United Reserve team, you know, he watched some of this team in this day and age grow and develop. And of course, uh, one of them uh, was Paul Popper. So they did build a great relationship, but, but obviously, recent reports have said, you know, Paul Popper and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, relationship um, is slowly uh, fading, um, of course. But like I said, I think if we sell Popper, you know, it will help us with our rebuilding process. And of course, um, it will help us uh, with our uh, transition. So I said, for Popper and Lukaku, it's probably at least £200 million. You know, we are currently uh, going 
currently going to get. You know, that's what we'll probably you know raise. You know, if we do sell Lukaku and Pogba, maybe we may even get more there than two hundred million pounds. But like I said, the spending spree obviously is two hundred odd million pounds anywhere. But obviously, it's going to mount up to a lot more than that if we can get rid of Lukaku, and of course, um, if we can get rid of uh, Paul Pogba. But Solskjaer, like I said, you know, wants to bring at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the squad. Um, obviously, he still believes we can attract uh, players to the highest level. You know, even though we're not in Champions League football uh, for next season and all that. Obviously, Solskjaer has worked out his transfer strategy, as you all know. He wants to recommend um, a number of young players uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer, and he wants to recruit uh, British uh, talents this summer because he's quite a few. You know, there's quite a lot of uh, British uh, players um, on our um, agenda, um, of course. But Solskjaer is not intending on bringing any short-term uh, players uh, to the club. But we have got to get the right recruitment this summer because analysing our recruitment policy, you know, it's very, very poor. Obviously, you know, we didn't get anyone back in Janu January. Obviously, we didn't get as number one uh, targets uh, last summer because we didn't get as num the main factor reason why we didn't get as number one targets last summer because the board weren't backing, you know, the signings that Jose Mourinho wanted to uh, recommend uh, to come in. But like I said, we've got to get our number one targets this summer because we need to see vast improvements going on into next season of what we saw uh, last season because last season was very, very disappointing. You know, we finished six, you know, didn't uh, currently uh, win out um, and all that. And like I said, we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League last season. So we have got um, issues uh, defensively and that's one of the pivotal areas where Manchester United needs to strengthen up. I also think last season wasn't ruthless enough um, in front of goal. That was also another issue. Wasn't scoring enough goals, wasn't creative enough um, in the attacking third of the pitch. You know, I might have created chances, but obviously it's about uh, putting uh, the ball into the uh, back um, of the net, um, of course. So, like I said, you can uh, see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. Um, there's been a bit of bad news, as you all know, as I've been updating you on a regular basis um, as well, in regards to the director um, of football. Now, reportedly, we are uh, set to, um, uh, we are not expected to um, appoint um, a sporting uh, director in. So, this obviously means that Ed Woodward um, will be overseeing um, our transfer business uh, this summer. Because obviously, you know, we need, like I said, it was very essential that we got a director of football in because, um, you know, we need um, a structural change um, at the club. But obviously, now we're not getting a sporting director in. So, there's going to be no structural change um, at Manchester United. Like I said, we needed to get a director of football in because obviously I said like like I said Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, needs uh, backing uh, this summer but like I said there was there was a load of candidate names mentioned you know who was who was linked with the director's role at Old Trafford obviously you know Rio Ferdinand had been spoken about Paul Mitchell before had been spoken about Patrice Every been spoken about um, obviously you know um, Edwin van der Sar um, had also uh, been spoken about so there was uh, Darren Fletcher as well so there were so many names uh, that were linked uh, with that director's role uh, at Manchester United but now we are set to miss out um, on a current uh, sporting uh, director so now is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gonna, is, is he going to succeed um, in these conditions now we're not getting um, a sporting uh, director in um, obviously I love um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to bits because he was a great player for Manchester United you know for 11 years um, and all that and obviously you know reflecting back when he was the interim manager he did really really well you know a bit potentially you know nearly won every game when he was um, interim manager you know we exceeded um, expectation levels um, and all that and we're getting the best term um, out of these group of players but obviously it just all went on you know since he uh, got uh, the job uh, permanently you know I don't know why is it is, is something to do with a different sort of level of um, pressure and all that but like I said I think he was a great player for us but he hasn't really uh, got uh, the experience of manager um, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that was, that's that's what does concern me not to the highest level um, especially um, obviously he won a couple of Norwegian uh, titles uh, with Molde um, and all that so he, he hasn't really got the experience um, of a manager uh, but like I said you know hopefully you know we can see vast improvements going on um, into next season but if it all does go wrong I will want Solskjaer out even though I do love him um, a lot but I just don't want us to to, to keep sacking managers because you know we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers we've already sat free you know since Alex Ferguson uh, retired them um, and all that but we have been playing catch up anywhere for the last five um, or six years you know a lot, hell of a lot of money um, has been invested um, into the club you know we've seen players come in you know we have seen uh, players uh, currently go the majority of the money that you know that we have spent um, has obviously you know been on you know the wrong players with the wrong mentality and obviously you know they haven't fit, fitted the culture or fit, they haven't fitted uh, the culture or the history um, of the club and all that and you can blatantly see that these are cultural uh, problems um, at Manchester United, but looking at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still um, in the process um, of rebuilding. But like I said, 200 million pounds, you know, should be enough to get you around five players um, on the board. I think three or four players um, are expected uh, to leave uh, this summer. Maybe five um, are expected to uh, leave uh, this summer. I think another issue as well, you know, we have let far too many uh, players uh, contracts uh, run down. Um, obviously, you know, that's uh, been um, a current uh, problem. But yeah, with Paul Pogba, I think he probably will end up, you know, going, like I said, there's a possibility chance he could remain at the football club, you know, based um, on the huge uh, transfer fee that we have put on him. But obviously, you know, Juventus are orchestrating some out, you know, Real Madrid are orchestrating some out, you know, to try and convince Manchester United, um, of course, uh, to sell him. So Real Madrid said they were, they were willing to offer Gareth Bale. Juventus now, well, Manchester United have basically said to Juventus, you know, we want uh, Joe Sancello if we are willing uh, if we are willing to uh, let uh, Paul Pogba, you know, uh, currently um, go. And um, as he updated you earlier on um, about the news um, about uh, Romney World, Lukaku, of course, you know, it has been looking better imminent, you know, he's set to leave uh, Manchester United. Um, obviously, um, 
As it has actually, you know, uh, confirmed um, about uh, Ronald uh, Lukaku. He's basically said about Antonio Conte, you know, he's uh, the best uh, manager um, in the world. So basically, you know, Lukaku wants to play um, under uh, Antonio uh, Conte. Obviously, reflecting back when Antonio Conte was Chelsea, the Chelsea manager um, in 2017, obviously, you know, Antonio Conte, you know, wanted uh, Ronald uh, Lukaku then um, at Chelsea. But obviously, you know, we got uh, Lukaku um, instead um, of currently um, Chelsea. But we do know Inter Milan um, have been heavily linked uh, with uh, Ronald uh, Lukaku. Uh, like I said, I think Inter Milan need to raise around £40 million pounds before the end of this month uh, to meet uh, financial fair play uh, regulations but I think uh, this this could be the stumbling block of Lukaku making his move to Inter Milan based on that you know the financial fair play rules and all that and I think also a stumb- uh, another stumbling block of Lukaku making his, uh, his move to Inter Milan is the huge transfer fee that we are currently uh, demanding so we to, well it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that we want around £80 million pounds, uh, for Romelu Lukaku so basically we're looking to recoup the majority of the money that we did pay for him uh, from Everton back in 2017 because we got him for £75 million. Pounds. Obviously, there were several add-ons included in the deal of around £15 million. Pounds. So, initially, um, it had risen the deal to £90 million. Pounds. So, we're looking to recoup the majority of the money. He's got three years left um, on his contract. So, I wouldn't say Manchester United are in any rush you know, to sell him, but I think you know he's one of the problematic uh, players um, at the club. And, obviously, you know, he's surface two requirements um, Manchester United because, obviously, you know, Lukaku is reluctant you know, to play a backup you know, to uh, Marcus Rashford because, obviously, we do know that Rashford um, is first choice um, ahead of him now. And, obviously, Lukaku has been at Manchester United you know, two years. Obviously, enjoyed a very difficult second season with us um, as I said you know he did well in his first season I think he scored 27 goals in all competitions um, in his first season but didn't replicate, replicate that um, of course in his second season and obviously Manchester United you know told him uh, the other week uh, that he can't uh, leave uh, the club but reportedly you know we want around uh, £80 million for him but uh, Inter Milan obviously you know are going to be reluctant to pay up to £80 million pounds, uh, for um, his services I think from Inter Milan's perspective you know they initially rate Lukaku um, at around uh, £50 million uh, pounds. Uh, but obviously as it um <coughs> <clears throat> obviously, as it came out the other week, obviously Conte, Conte has been um, appointed into Milan's manager, and he's obviously not identified Romelu Lukaku as his uh, number one uh, target. But it didn't, as you say, like I do keep saying, you know, that everything else um, had been uh, currently um, agreed. It said Inter Milan had agreed the personal terms with Lukaku. It also said Inter Milan um, had agreed um, a five-year deal with Lukaku. And it also said Lukaku was willing to uh, take a um, pay cut, you know, to make um, his move uh, to Inter Milan. Because I think Lukaku was in Italy, was it, two or three weeks ago? You know, t- you know, he'd had discussions, you know, with Inter, Milan, uh, Inter Milan's representatives um, over getting um, a deal uh, currently uh, finalised. But obviously, they have not yet, you know, come to an agreement um, on a fee. But I think we need to sell Romelu Lukaku. You know, it will be a very, very um, beneficial for us, I think Inter Milan are orchestrating uh, something out, so it did come out the other day saying that, you know, we had turned down a player plus cash offer from Inter Milan, obviously Inter Milan offered Ivan Perisic, you know, plus cash but Manchester United, you know, had currently uh, turned uh, this down, because obviously Ivan Perisic is no longer a Manchester United target, it was a long term target on Jose Mourinho, but he's no longer now a Manchester United target um, you know, he's um, Ivan Perisic so we don't want Ivan Perisic obviously Akadi has been spoken about um, as part of the deal with Lukaku, but I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is keen on bringing, uh, bringing uh, Mario Akadi in. I think actually, you know, Inter Milan, you know, want to uh, get rid of uh, Mario and Mercadi. So, yeah, and, you know, obviously Lukaku was talking a lot, a, a lot about, you know, uh, talking about it a while back, you know, about his dream of playing um, in the Serie A um, and all that. And obviously, you know, Lukaku's agent um, had revealed him um, a while back, you know, his uh, future um, is very, very um, open. So, I think, you know, we definitely you know, need to uh, get rid of him. Uh, obviously, you know, he wants to go, he wants to probably go to Inter Milan, you know, to get a short first team football. Because obviously, at Manchester United, he's no longer um, a short uh, first team football, but he's 26 years of age. He's still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. He's in his prime basically you know is Lukaku I think he scored 42 goals in 96 games you know in two you know in his two seasons you know with uh, Manchester United um, and all that um but yeah, as you all know, but anyway, I've got strong reservations about Lukaku. You know, he's too slow, not really good um, in the air. You know, he's a big game bottler, his footballing ability. You know, like I said, I've just got too many strong reservations um, about uh, Romelu Lukaku. Don't get me wrong, his ratio is still very good in the Premier League. Um, very, very good in the Premier League. You know, he scored a hell of a lot of goals. His pedigrees are very, very good um, in the Premier League. But I think it would be beneficial, of course, if we can um, offload um, Lukaku. But yeah, Inter Milan need to raise £40 million before the end of this month. And... Um, you know, to meet a financial uh, fair play uh, regulations. So, like I said with Lukaku and Pogba, probably one of them um, at least uh, will uh, leave uh, the club. Uh, maybe one of them will stay, or maybe perhaps, you know, both of them, you know, uh, may stay. Um, I do not currently um, know. Uh, but as I've been updating you um, on a regular uh, basis, you know, what players um, um, are linked uh, with Manchester United um, and all that, as you all know, we have got Daniel James um, on the board, so we'll be looking to build on that now. And um, I think probably our second sign is going to be Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sporting Lisbon. That's looking very imminent um, indeed. Obviously, you know, he's been on Manchester United's agenda, you know, for a while, of course, as Bruno Fernandes, and obviously he's one of our uh, main uh, priority uh, targets. Reports came out, uh, uh, reports came out, uh, was it, uh, the other day, saying that, you know, we, we reached an agreement with Sporting Lisbon. It says we're very close. Uh, 
uh, to sign uh, Bruno Fernandes. You know, Bruno Fernandes um, is aware of um, the speculation. He's basically said he would talk. He would talk to Sporting Lisbon about leaving. You know, if a big if a big club come calling in, and obviously you know if someone was to make an offer that he can't uh, currently uh, refuse, uh, Bruno Fernandes. So I like him um, a lot. Uh, like I said, report a lot of reports came out uh, from Portugal uh, last week. You know, saying that you know the Portuguese press saying that Tottenham were in for him. It also said uh, Liverpool, um, of course, uh, were in for him. But I think you know we are in the ascendancy um, of getting um, a deal um, over the line uh, for Bruno Fernandes. It didn't as you say, you know, we had scheduled a meeting with Sporting Lisbon, you know, to uh, get uh, the deal uh, finalised. But I think we've improved our office. I think we are set to get him in a deal uh, worth around what seventy one million pounds because this is what Manchester United um, are preparing to pay uh, for um, his services. He is primarily an attacking midfielder, so you could po probably say if Pogba does leave, you know, Bruno Fernandes uh, would be uh, the adequate uh, replacement. He's going to fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer strategy, you know, perfectly. But it has been mainly Man United and Manchester City, City that have been in for Bruno Fernandes. But obviously, reports came out uh, last week saying that City have pulled out of the race for Bruno Fernandes, and they have basically you know withdrawn uh, their interest because I think Manchester City were only willing to pay around forty-seven or forty-eight uh, million uh, pounds for him, and. Um, City were only willing to pay around forty-seven or forty-eight million pounds uh, for um, his services, and um, obviously I think they were also willing to um, offer a couple of their players um, as part of the deal. But I like uh, Bruno Fernandes a lot. Um, like I said, he's been at Sporting Lisbon um, a couple of uh, seasons. He's exceeded their um, expectation levels and all that. You know, reports came out was it early this week or last week saying that Ed Woodward, you know, was hesitant um, over our transfer move for Bruno Fernandes because uh, Ed Woodward's got reservations about us spending big on players who he doesn't think, from his own perspective, are going to step up to the mark. But I think Bruno Fernandes, well, I know he hasn't really played to the highest level um, as yet but I think he'll definitely you know, step up to the mark um, at Manchester United and all that and him, him coming to Manchester United is going to take um, his football in her career uh, to the next uh, level. I think it's all said that Inter Milan um, have been in for him because maybe you know obviously you know, Bruno Fernandes was talking about you know that he still watches the Italian Championship and all that and he watches Inter and all the rest and he said um, he follows um, all of them this is what you know he basically said you know uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes and obviously he spent the majority of his career um, in Italy you know when he was younger you know with the likes of San Pandaria um, and underneath um, and all that but yeah very very um, good player um, indeed so it's very imperative that we can get um, a deal um, over the line for him um but yeah, I think his initial release cost um, is around um, £86 uh, million, uh, pounds, um, of course, and he's under contract uh, with Sporting Lisbon, like I said, um, until uh, two <coughs> until uh, 2023 and I think last season for Sporting Lisbon you know didn't he score um, about uh, 31 uh, goals uh, Bruno Fernandes uh, but yeah he can score goals and all that and you know we need some you know someone in that midfield that can win his uh, them goals and I do believe that Bruno Fernandes um, is the uh, current uh, right uh, solution um, obviously I think we, we can get a deal um, over the line for um, from uh, for Anwan Bissaka you know uh, for Crystal Palace and I like uh, Anwan Bissaka um, a lot um, as you um, all do currently um, know allegedly it said that Anwan Bissaka has told uh, Crystal Palace uh, that he wants to uh, join uh, Manchester United um, but like I said he's one of um, Oligan and Solskjaer's uh, prime targets he is predominantly a right back um, is Anwan Bissaka and I really really um, like him um, a lot um, initially you know we've re well we've recently um, just had um, a £40 million pound bid uh, turned down for Anwan Bissaka but now reports are coming out saying that we are preparing to put a bid in for him of around £50 million pounds. whether this is this is enough to convince Palace to sell him or not um, I do not know but I think initially you know Crystal Palace you know, want around uh, £60 million pounds. but looking at it ultimately you know Crystal Palace um, are reluctant to sell him because they know how much of the central uh, player um, he is but I'm still a bit sceptical of Anwan Bissaka coming in you know, I don't, I don't think there's enough credibility in the stories as yet. Um, you know, to speak about Anwan Bissaka, you know, to be um, quite honest, so I'm still uh, quite um, skeptical um, about it. But we are preparing to put a bid in for him of around fifty uh, million uh, pounds. Like I said, predominantly a right back, and that's one of the pivotal areas where we do need to strengthen up because obviously we need a replacement for Antonio Valencia. Uh, we need an upgrade uh, to Wash Young because he's no longer got the ability to fulfil that right back position. And obviously, you know, we need um, a cover up uh, for uh, Diego Dalot. So I do believe Anwan Bissaka, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution. He's proven in the Premier League. League. Obviously, he's only had 21 years of age. Only been in Crystal Palace's senior squad about what 15, 16 months. Obviously, made his senior debut for Crystal for Crystal Palace in February of last year. And obviously, last season he established himself um, as a first team uh, regular down Wan Bissaka. And I think he's made about 42 uh, senior appearances. He's got three years uh, left um, on his contract uh, with Crystal Palace. So I do believe Wan um, Bissaka um, is our uh, top uh, priority. But he has spent the entirety of his career with Crystal Palace. And even if he doesn't leave Crystal Palace this summer, at some point in his career, he's, you know he's going to 
want to rejuvenate his career, you know, take his footballing uh, career to the next uh, level. But obviously, you know, when he was younger, I think he joined Crystal Palace as a youth, a youth. I think he joined Crystal Palace at the age of 11. Obviously, you know, graduated uh, from their youth system uh, and all that. And I think he mainly when he was younger, um, he was an out and out winner. But obviously, as he was, he, he was developing, you know, he got rotated um, as a right back and all that. And um, yeah, he's done really, really well. And I think, you know, he's regarded now as one of the best uh, right backs um, in the Premier League. But I really, really like him a lot. And I think he's got the ability, you know, to elevate Manchester United at least in the next two to three years. You know, he's got that ability, you know, to play out from the back. He's very, very good um, on that right hand side. His defensive capabilities are um, very, very good. So he's a type player, you know, that Manchester United, you know, do need with, you know, he's a player that's got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him. Um, he has uh, got um, immense uh, talent. So hopefully this £50 million can be enough to convince uh, Crystal Palace to offload him. Obviously, you know, we're looking at Norwich's uh, Max Evans, you know, if we don't get a deal um, over the line uh, for Anwan Bissaka. So we're basically seeing Max Evans as an alternative, you know, to um, Anwan Bissaka. You know, Max Evans is only uh, 19 uh, years of age, obviously won the championship uh, with Norwich uh, last season. I think it was on his first season last season um, in the senior squad uh, with Norwich. Um, he's primarily a right back, um, can also play as a left back, but he is uh, primarily um, a right, right back. Um, is Max um, Evans. I think Crystal Palace would look into Max Evans, you know, if they did uh, lose, you know, um, Anwan Bissaka. But reports have been recently coming out saying that we are we are saying, seeing uh, Max Evans as the alternative, you know, to uh, Anwan Bissaka. I think Max Evans signed a new contract last year. Was it was it back in October um, of last year? If I'm right, um, he signed um, a new contract uh, with Norwich. So there has been uh, talks um, about him going on. Obviously, as well, uh, winning uh, for Thomas uh, Munier uh, from PSG. And looking at it from a financial point of view, you know, Thomas Munier is going to substantially, you know, cost us a lot less uh, than Anwan Bissaka. He's going to substantially cost us a lot less than now. Man, Saka is uh, Thomas uh, Munier because it came out uh, the other week saying that Manchester United um, and asked, "What are you doing?" No, I'm just going to go for the You know, he's going to substantially cost us a lot less uh, than uh, Anwan Bissaka um, and all that. But he did say Manchester United um, and Arsenal um, are in for him um, and all that. Um, he's a good player, predominantly um, a right back. Um, as I said to you, I think from his own preference, he wants to uh, make uh, the move to Manchester United. Uh, does Thomas uh, Munier? Because um, I think, um, he's, yeah, he's been revealed he's been a Manchester United fan uh, since um, he was um, a current uh, child. Predominantly um, a right back, like I said. Can play in um, other positions, got goals in him, got um, assists in him um, and all that. But I think he's set to uh, leave uh, PSG because obviously his surplus two requirements at PSG, you know, he's um, only a 27, uh, he's 27 years of age, um, he's Munier. Like I said, he's still got quite um, a lot of uh, development in him, but like I said, he's going to substantially cost us a lot less uh, than Anwan Bissaka and all that. But um, Anwan Bissaka, of course, uh, I think uh, remains um, our top uh, priority. But he did initially say PSG want from around 22 25 million pounds uh, for uh, Thomas uh, Munier, and that is um, a reasonable uh, figure. Only got a year uh, left um, on his deal with PSG. He's been at PSG in um, about uh, three years, made about 100 odd appearances. Um, obviously, you know, PSG got him from Club Brugge back in uh, 2006. And all that, but Arsenal have inquired about his services because obviously Munier's played under Um Ryanmay, and actually, you no know, Munier found himself a, a, a you know a regular starter, you know, under Um Ryanmay. But since Um Ryanmay left PSG, you know, Thomas Munier yeah, has found himself a service uh, to requirements. So, yeah, there has been a lot of talks about Munier going on. So, there's so many, there's quite a few, you know, right backs um, on our um, agenda, but like I said, Aung Wan Bissaka um, is the top uh, priority. Um, obviously, as I updated you um, earlier on um, as well, um, in regards to Antoine Griezmann uh, from Atletico Madrid, now we're Reports have been uh, coming out uh, today saying that reportedly Manchester United are set to hijack Barcelona's move uh, for Anton Griezmann and it did basically say we are preparing to smash our transfer record and we are willing to offer around £95 million uh, for Anton Griezmann. Well, we do know it came out uh, last month, you know, that he had made um, an admission, you know, saying that he's going to be saying that he's going to be uh, leaving Atletico Madrid and he is going to be uh, leaving um, Atletico Madrid and obviously it looked very, you know, imminent that he was, you know, going to be uh, going uh, to Barcelona. But now it, recent reports have said that Barcelona don't want him. You know, they're stalling them um, on their move uh, for Griezmann, and now they've got second thoughts um, about bringing Griezmann in. They've, they've got reservations, you know, about um, Antoine Griezmann, of course, um, at Barcelona. I think from Griezmann's preference, I think he does uh, want to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Barcelona. Well, it did uh, say this uh, before, but I think Griezmann at the moment um, is uns uncertain um, about um, his current uh, future. But now, reportedly, you know, Manchester United have stepped in. It came out a couple of weeks ago saying that Manchester United have uh, made um, initial uh, contact, you know, with Antoine Griezmann um, over the potential move uh, to Old Trafford. Um, obviously, you know, um, his release call. 
clause is around 170 odd million pounds. This does reduce uh, to the beginning uh, 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 at the beginning um, of next month. I think it reduces to around 104 or 105 uh, million uh, pounds. Um, of course, but like I said, I do like uh, Griezmann um, a lot. Uh, probably Griezmann would want to go to a club that's got Champions League football. Obviously, Manchester United haven't got Champions League uh, football. But like I said, I wouldn't be keen on us, you know, like paying just under 100 million pounds uh, for Anton Griezmann because I don't think he's the fundamental player um, as he used to be a couple of years ago. Still got a lot of goals. Him, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he would deliver the goals to us, you know, if he did uh, come to uh, Manchester United. You know, he's 28 years of age and he has still got quite um, a bit of a uh, development in him um, as Anton uh, Griezmann. But maybe he wants to rejuvenate his career, Griezmann. Maybe he wants his, to take his career to the next level because obviously he, I think he may be frustrated, you know, with a lack of, you know, with a lack of compet, you know, lack of competitiveness, you know, from um, Athletic Comedy because really the only major honour he's won with Athletic Comedy was the Europa League um, and all that, you know, um, Anton Griezmann. So, like I said, so far anyway, spent the entirety of his career um, in Spain. You know, he's been at Athletic Comedy five years. He scored 133 goals in 257 games, and like, and I think he, you know, initially uh, began his uh, career with Real Sociedad. Uh, did uh, Anton Griezmann? Obviously, Griezmann signed a new long-term contract with Athletic Comedy last summer, uh, so he's under contract with them till 2023. He, he initially, you know, was on the verge um, of joining uh, Barcelona, but like I said, he signed them um, a new contract uh, with Athletic Comedy. But now, reportedly, Barcelona are currently, you know, stalling um, on their move for him. And uh, potentially, yeah, so Athletic Comedy, I think from their perspective, you know, they're unsure, you know, where he's currently uh, going to be uh, going. Um, obviously, you know, they've said he's been a great servant. To, servant to the <coughs> He's been a great servant to them um, and all that, you know, and they've, you know, they've got um, a good uh, relationship um, and all that, but they just don't know where, you know, Griezmann um, is currently uh, going to be uh, going um, and all that. Um, but like I said, Manchester United, you know, were on the verge of getting him a couple of years ago, but due to the transfer ban that Athletic Comedy got, you know, his move to Manchester United uh, never uh, materialised. Uh, so, yeah, reportedly, you know, we are now um, in there uh, for uh, Antoine uh, Griezmann. Um Obviously, as I've been updating you um, on a regular basis um, as well about uh, Matthias uh, Delit uh, for Marks, obviously, you know, he's been one of our uh, potential uh, targets um, as uh, Matthias uh, Delit, but I think now we are set to miss out on Matthias Delit because I think the main factor reason why we're set to miss out on Matthias Delit because obviously, you know, he wants to go to a club that's got Champions League football and I think he also wants to go to a club that can assure him first team football and Manchester United, you know, would definitely, you know, be able to assure uh, Matthias uh, Delit uh, first team uh, football and, you know, I like uh, Matthias uh, Delit um, a lot, as you all know, um, he's um, a central uh, defender, um, obviously, you know, only an uh, 19 uh, years um, of age and all that but I think now according to recent reports I think you know the two uh, teams that are considered to be the favourites um, are Barcelona and PSG I think now reportedly PSG um, and are in the ascendancy because as I said I was reading reports uh, yesterday it did basically say that PSG have reportedly offered £70 million pounds to Ajax plus um, add-ons included and it did say PSG had offered Matty Stillett a five-year deal worth around £340,000 a week and it also said that uh, his ad Matty Stillett's agent Raliola has been um, in the Negotiations with PSG's uh, sporting director, you know, over getting a deal uh, finalised them um, and all that. So I think you know talks are set, you know, to continue uh, to position or about getting, you know, coming to agreement um, on a fee um, and all that and getting the deal um, over the line. So could be looking likely, you know, he's going to be uh, going uh, to PSG. We do know PSG has spent big in the last couple of seasons, you know, um, on Neymar um, and Mbappe um, and all that. So yeah, I think you know PSG now uh, are in the ascendancy. I think also Barcelona is still in there. I think it did say Barcelona was set to reopen talks with his agent Riley Oliver uh, sometime uh, this week, but. Uh, at least in the last couple of months, Barcelona have been in these, you know, ascendancy of getting a deal over the line for him. Obviously, Barcelona have already got a deal over the line for his current teammate, Frankie de Jong and all that, who they paid £65 million pounds for. But he came out the other week saying that talks had stalled, you know, between Matty Stillett and Barcelona because they were struggling to come to an agreement um, on the terms. But I do believe uh, that PSG now are willing to offer better terms uh, than Barcelona. You know, Barcelona, you know, basically were not willing to meet what De Ligt was demanding. You know, they're not willing to meet uh, what his um, agent, Riley Ola, um, of course, um, is demanding. So this is why they haven't uh, come to a um, an initial um, agreement um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, Liverpool have been in there for him. Like I said, you know, Liverpool may be keen on getting him in because they want to put him, put, put him alongside Virgil van Dijk um, in their back line. Virgil van Dijk and Delet have got a good relationship because they know each other really, really well. You know, they're both playing the Netherlands national team, of course, uh, they are uh, both uh, Dutch. So this is the main factor reason why Liverpool um, have been in for him because of uh, Virgil van Dijk. City have been in for him because City are looking for a replacement uh, for Vincent Company. Obviously, you know, Bayern Munich have been in for him, but now they, I think they've dropped out of the race. You know, Juventus, of course, um, have been in for him but in terms of the transfer fees he's going to cost you from 70 to 75 million pounds um, is Matty Stillet because that's what um, he's initially uh, rated at but I'd love him you know to come to Manchester United you know I think he's blending very very well um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line and uh, we need someone that can complain Victor Lindelof and I think Dillett you know would be the right solution you know Lindelof were really really good last season in his second season with the club he did really really well I think he exceeded expectations you know he showed that he was showing that ability that he can play out from the back his distribution was good his passing was good you know I didn't really settle in him um, in his first season you know 
bit to Lindelof, but I think there was, you know, there was vast improvements uh, in his, you know, game um, in his second season there with the club. You know, of it's where Lindelof's obviously we got him from Benfica in 2017 for around what was it, just um, over there, 30 million pounds. But yeah, very, very impressed him um, indeed. Uh, very, very impressed him um, indeed. With it to Lindelof uh, last season, but saying um, about the late, you know, it did say Manchester United um, had offered him, you know, around a three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week contract. Obviously, you know, this equates uh, to almost seventeen uh, million pounds a um, year. And obviously, you know, if this was to process, which I don't think it's gonna, you know, it would make Matty Stelite, you know, one of the highest paid players at Manchester United, and it'd also, you know, make him the highest paid uh, teenager um, in world football. But I don't think Matty Stelite yet has made a full on decision um, on his future. Um, I think, you know, it came out was it um, sometime? I think it was last week saying that he was set to inform Manchester United about a decision on his future in the coming days but I think we're going to know in the next week um, or two you know where his current uh, future lies he's looking very imminent you know he's going to be uh, leaving Ajax but it still remains uncertain where we will be applying um, his trade uh, next season but like I said so far he's spent the entirety of his career with Ajax you know he's been an Ajax player since what the age of eight uh, the age of nine progressed up the ranks uh, fantastically well been in the senior squad with Ajax since what 2016 he made his senior debut with just uh, the age of 17 uh, what obviously you know was named uh, captain um, at the age of 18 and all that and he has become an integral uh, part of Ajax is a squad enjoyed a great season last season you know winning the domestic double with Ajax progressing to the Champions League semi-final of course uh, you know winning uh, the Harry Device uh, title um, of course so Ajax did really really well last season I mean also uh, last year as well you know Matt Easter later won uh, the Golden Boy Award so I really really um, like him um, a lot and he has been on Manchester United's agenda you know for quite uh, some time but I think it is Barcelona and PSG uh, that are in the ascendancy of course uh, of currently uh, getting him and um, as I have been updating you um, on a regular basis um, as well about um, Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester, uh, not uh, Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester, um, as you all know, obviously it is Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that are battling now uh, for um, his services. Reportedly, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has instructed Ed Woodward, you know, to go in and make a move for Harry Maguire, even though Leicester, you know, have priced him out of the transfer market because obviously Leicester are reluctant to basically sell Harry Maguire basically because Leicester know how much of a central player he is. This is why Leicester are demanding an ast ast uh, um, extortionate amount. You know, it's basically saying Leicester. You know, want around eighty or ninety million pounds for him. You know, I think I don't think it's worth eighty or ninety million pounds. Harry Maguire, but maybe Manchester United now are maybe you know willing to pay it. You know, recent reports saying it would be more than likely that Manchester United or Manchester City, you know, would be reluctant, you know, to pay that kind um, of money. You know, for Harry Maguire, even though we have got, even though Man United and City have got the financial power, you know, to uh, meet uh, that evaluation. Of course, Harry Maguire isn't really one of our main, main priority targets, um, of course, but he has been on Manchester United's agenda, you know, since last summer because obviously last summer that was that uh, it was well it started the process they started under Judge Jose Mino about Harry Maguire and the rumours have continued to subsist since then but obviously you know Harry Maguire is one of the players obviously that Jose Mino you know currently wanted but um, obviously you know but obviously, you know, last summer, um, obviously, you know, we were not willing to, you know, pay £70 million uh, for his services that initially, you know, Leicester uh, currently uh, wanted. But I think City have identified how Maguire is their number one target, you know, to replace uh, Vincent uh, Company um, and all that. Um, but yeah, Harry Maguire, 26 uh, years of age, still a very good uh, central uh, defender. You know, he's not a Van Dyke from Liverpool. He's not a colour baller from Napoli and all that. Or Raphael Ram from Real Madrid is nowhere near in their calibre um, or level. But still a very, very good uh, central uh, defender. But if Man United or City were willing to pay or £90 million pounds for him, it would make the most expensive defending world football also making them uh, the most expensive English player um, of all time um, ahead of Kyle Walker obviously you know City got Kyle Walker for around uh, £50 million pounds with initial add-ons included which potentially risen it to around £52 or £53 million pounds, and this was um, a couple of uh, years ago but Harry Maguire signed the new long-term contract with Leicester last summer so now he's under contract with them until 2023 um but yeah, still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development in him, and I still I do believe it was some part in his career. Is some part in his career if he doesn't leave this summer, he'll want to take um, his footballing career to the next level, and he wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career. Uh, will Harry Maguire? Um, but like I said, he's been at Leicester a couple of seasons. He's proven in the Premier League. I think he's made about 101 um, appearances um, in the Premier League. Leicester got him for 17 million uh, from Hull City um, a couple of uh, seasons ago. So yeah, there has been um, a lot of talks um, about him going on. So I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is keen on bringing him in because I still I think he'd be fantastic um, in our back line. Um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof, you know, with Harry Maguire. Uh, but yeah, there's been so many uh, talks um, about him going on. Um, like, like I said, I think we need two central defenders, you know, because obviously, you know, Phil Jones and Smalling, you know, potentially not good enough. You know, they've been too long serving their players um, at the club and all that. You know, it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving Smalling and Jones a uh, new long term uh, contract. Um, but yeah, they've been too long serving players. And, comp you know, comparing them, I think Smalling's a much uh, better uh, defender uh, than Phil Jones. Uh, but like I said, you know, they're just too um, inconsistent now. And this is why I said we need two central 
defenders. I know we've got Eric Bay because I know, but Eric Bay is now initially uh, lost Hermes' um, place in the team. You know, he's too inconsistent. Um, is Eric Bay? Uh, plus, I think his Manchester United career has been badly affected. You know, the amount of injuries he has sustained. Um, obviously, you know, uh, with his fallout um, under managers, I think it's had a really bad effect um, on his uh, Manchester United uh, career. So uh, I don't think we'll sell him this summer. We probably would be open to selling him. You know, would be looking to recoup the initial uh, thirty million pounds. You know, that we did pay for him from Villarreal uh, back in uh, two thousand and sixteen and that. But I think we need to get rid of Eric Bay. We know it's looking very imminent that Rojo is going to be going. We know it's looking very, very likely. You know that Dime, you know, is currently going to be uh, leaving. So an estimated guess, you know, we can get around twenty-five or thirty million pounds. You know, for Matteo Dime, you know, and Marcus uh, Rojo. But saying about you know Rojo and Dime, they've enjoyed difficult times at Manchester United. You know, Dime hasn't really had the chance. And with Rojo, you know, he's become injury prone since he's come to Manchester United. You know, he has sustained um, a lot of um, injuries. So, so basically, you know, Rojo um, has struggled uh, with his uh, fitness uh, regime. Um, I think we also need to get rid of uh, Matic, but we know Matic isn't going to be leaving. But we need to get rid of him, um, of course, because he's too inconsistent, aging up, too slow um, in that midfield. And I think, you know, we need a holding midfielder that's fast um, and tenacious um, and all that. And obviously, you know, Matic isn't this. And um, like I said, you know, we need a holding midfielder because Fellaini left back in January. Um, obviously, you know, Scott Montgomery, where he's too um, inexperienced um, at the moment. So I do believe uh, we need um, a holding uh, midfielder. As I did basically say to you, um, you know, I think we have let far too many players their contracts are run down, you know, with the De Gea situation, you know, recent reports have come out saying that we are willing to offer David De Gea um, a new contract term and all that. Um it remains uncertain whether David De Gea is going to going to be you know willing to offer, uh, accept uh, this uh, new contract offer. Obviously, it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that you know he was uh, he came out a couple of weeks ago saying that you know he had turned down a final contract offer from Manchester United. Reportedly, it did say David De Gea is demanding around three hundred and fifty grand a week uh, from the club if he's to remain loyal to the club and if he's to, if he's to sign um, a new contract over the club. But reports did say that we're not willing to meet his three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week uh, wage demands in his current deal at the moment. David De Gea is on about two hundred grand a week, so he's demanding like a £150,000 per hour. So basically, De Gea wants to be one of the highest player players in the club, like um, I said. Um, but PSG have obviously you know, been heavily linked to him. I think now PSG have stepped their interest up in David De Gea because obviously you know, Buffon um, has left uh, PSG. It didn't as she said that PSG worth paying to put a bid in for him around uh, £60 million. Uh, pounds. And obviously, you know, we'd want to cash in for De Gea this summer rather than letting go on a free transfer uh, next year because that would be a calamity if we let David De Gea go um, on a free transfer uh, next year. Um, like I said, at full value for a goalkeeper, definitely worth uh, 100 a million pounds you know we won't get 100 million pounds because he's in the final year of his contract maybe if he had three years left on his contract or four we probably would get a uh, you know 100 million pounds uh, for David De Gea because he is potentially the best goalkeeper in the world um, obviously you know he's been here um, eight years so he has been a long servant here you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how imperative David De Gea is he has made over 300 other appearances in all competitions he's won everything here domestically you know he's won the Cubs play of the year four times um, out of the last uh, six years um, as uh, David De Gea and hasn't really done much wrong in his eight year period I know he was making some costly mistakes so the back end of last season, but that was mainly something to do, you know, with the contract, with you know, with the contractual uh, situation um, and all that. But you know, Real Madrid have been linked to him for a number of years, and obviously, you know, reflecting back in 2015, you know, Real Madrid nearly got him, but due to a fax machine, of course, uh, the dealer never materialised. And um, obviously, he grew up in Spain, and that you know, did uh, you know, David De Gea, obviously, you know, initially uh, began his uh, career um, in Spain, you know, with um, Atletico Madrid. Uh, but I just don't see him, you know, make it, going to. I just don't see David De Gea going uh, to Real Madrid if he leaves the club. I think he'll end up, you know, going uh, to Paris Saint Germain. I think also, Juventus have been um, interested as well. Um, but like I said, I don't think it's in Oligan and Solskjaer's plans to buy goalkeeper to replace uh, De Gea, you know, if De Gea uh, leaves. I think he's willing to promote Sergio Romero as our number one goalkeeper. Like I said, I've got two, I've got reservations about this because I don't think Romero's yet, you know, reliable enough, you know, to come our number one goalkeeper. Dean Henderson's too inexperienced at the moment. He needs to gain a bit um, more um, experience. Dean Henderson, of course, um, has been on loan with Sheffield United. Uh, but like I said, you know, there's been quite a few co 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 goalkeepers' names that have been mentioned who could replace De Gea at the club. We you know there's been talks about Jan Blanca going on. Obviously, recent reports have said about him saying that he wants to leave Atletico Madrid. You know, mainly something to do, you know, with the broken promises and all that over his uh, over the, over his future, something like that. So basically, he wants to leave Atletico Madrid due to broken promises, and um, you know, his preference um, is to join Manchester United because he did say Jan Blanca was a Manchester United fan um, as a child um, and all that. Uh, Jan Blanca's a really really good goalkeeper. Though he's 26 years of age. He's actually you know, two years younger than David De Gea. He's regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He's not in the he's not in the same calibre or level um, as David De Gea. Um, he's a uh, Jan um, or Blanc. Uh, but yeah, I think he came out about this story about four or five weeks ago, saying that Manchester United you know, were willing to trigger Jan or Blanc's uh, buyout clause. His buyout clause is around 107 million pounds. Obviously, recently extended his contract. Uh, was it a couple of uh, months ago, back in um, April? And I think he also did get a pay rise um, in his buyout clause. Uh, the Jan or Blanc. I think going the last season, it was Liverpool's Allison. Like I do keep saying, that I kept him um, as many. 
many uh, clean sheets um, as Jan Oblong. So that just shows how good uh, Jan um, Oblong is. Obviously, hasn't been in the Premier League um, as yet. Obviously, you know, he's been at Athletic Madrid five years. Athletic Madrid, you know, got him uh, from Benfica. He has made over 200 appearances uh, for Athletic Madrid um, as Jan um, Oblong. Um, He's made over 200 appearances. I think he's won three major honours, um, including the Europa League um, and the UEFA uh, Super Cup. So I think he's keen on leaving um, Atletico Madrid um, as Jan um, Oblong. So do you think he'd be a good replacement for De Gea? Obviously, there's been talks for Andrea Onana, you know, that um, Ajax uh, goalkeeper. You know, there's been talks um, about uh, Jordan Pitford. So, yeah, there has been so many names mentioned, you know, who could uh, replace uh, David De Gea. Um, like I said um, as well, you know, with Juan Mata, um, obviously, you know, recent reports said, you know, we've offered uh, Juan Mata a new contract, you know, it remains uncertain, you know, whether Juan Mata is going to be willing to accept this contract term and offer him um, or not. Um, obviously, it will be a long-term contract that we've offered uh, uh, Juan Mata, obviously, uh, because obviously, you know, um, he's aging up, he's 31 years and virtually, we'll probably offer him a new one-year or a new a new one-year extension or a, a two-year um, extension um, or something um, like that, uh, but we will uh, see uh, what happens uh, with Juan Mata. Um, obviously, Rashford's in the final year of his deal, it's very impairing that we, you know, come to an agreement uh, to get him um, a new contract term and all that. Um, I don't think Manchester United are orchestrating on selling uh, Marcus Rashford. Um, obviously, he's still a long-term solution for Manchester United, you know, even though he has been inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons, uh, in the last, uh, sorry, should I say, last couple of, uh, you know, months, not seasons, that were, that were my uh, mistake. Couple of Last couple of months, he has been uh, very, very um, inconsistent and all that. But like I said, uh, still... Um, you know, still a long-term solution. It's going to take him a couple of years, you know, to, you know, emulate to that level, um, of course. So it's going to take him a couple of years to get him to that level, of course, where he does currently want to be. But still a long-term solution. Only 21 years of age, um, is Marcus Rashford. And, um, yeah, so, like I said, uh, the main part of this video was to give you the latest news um, about uh, Paul Pogba. Now, reportedly, you know, Manchester United and Juventus have held talks um, in London um, with the transfer um, of Paul Pogba and all that. And reportedly, it does say if we are willing to let Paul Pogba go, well, initially we want £150 million, pounds, but if we are willing to let him go uh, to Juventus um, and all that. Uh, reportedly, you know, uh, we've said to Juventus, you know, we want Joe San, San what's his name, Joe Sancello, uh, you know, in exchange uh, for Paul Pobber. So this is what Manchester United um, are currently uh, demanding. So um, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um, if you do consider a subscriber, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.